Hi, uh, this is Neha. I'm just waiting to see how many people are there on the line. Um, hello. Hey. Um, so maybe I... Hello, hello. Um, I will start talking about uh, the project that uh, I did as part of the Space uh, 118 grant. Um, and first of all, I should say thank you to Anirudh and Divya. They were, they were really inspiring and beautiful presentations. So, thanks. And I should say thank you to Space 118 for the space uh, that we have been given to host this life. Uh, and this is my first Instagram live, so I have my fingers crossed for all of you. Uh, so today I will um, talk about uh, my project that I did for this grant, which is called Weightlifter, which is part of a larger uh, project uh, that I have been working on for the past few years uh, called Autoethnography Through Objects. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not in my studio at the moment. Uh, I will be sharing my work with you via images, um, but that also works. Um, I, so, autoethnography through objects was first um, conceptualized and the first iteration of the project happened in 2015 as part of my uh, MA at uh, the Royal College of Art. And it was a group of objects uh, that was made on my body um, and it was a self-reflective uh, project, it was autobiographical and the aim was to, um, to connect my experience to uh, the wider socio-political experience um, and and some of these images have been shared already on uh, in, during my uh, Instagram takeover, uh, but I just wanted to sort of reshare them to, to uh, bring in context to what I have been working on. Um, and it's it is basically personal memories and experiences and the in, like intangible knowledge of my body uh, that determine the outcome, determine the form. Uh, that this that the objects actually take. Um, in 2015, I then uh, I took the objects outside of the studio, and my interaction with the objects and and the sort of performance with the object and the documentation of that performance then became uh, the actual work. Um, also. Uh, I also decided at that point uh, that this is this cannot be a one-time project, and it's something that I have that has to happen recurrently to document where I am and where uh, where my how I am placed in my surroundings uh, at different moments in my life. Um, and in the past uh, few years, obviously. Uh, much happened in my life and and so much has happened around the world uh, and a lot of it is difficult to understand and to live with and I, I find that sometimes making work becomes a way to understand it at least if not learn to live with it um, and this for that matter this project itself has been really difficult to uh, to realize and to navigate the the, the experience to navigate the heaviness of uh, you know our current uh, situation with nuance has been quite uh, difficult and complex and uh, a challenge. Um, but uh, I, I keep going back to um, a few things that I read uh, and uh, that I think in some sense begin to form me. Um, and I, I will just share something from uh, Hope in the Dark by Rebecca Solnit. And she says, beneath the abstractions of political rhetoric are desires that are concrete, real, bodily. And they left room for improvisation and playfulness, pleasure and independence. 
and these words somehow have helped me resolve a personal conflict about the political and personal spaces that i i am trying to deal with and i navigate and and what i was unsure of how these two sit within me i i have begun to find a place for um, and i realize now that uh, in my approach the political is personal uh, so uh, going back to my process uh, going back to how i work uh, with clay in the studio space uh, it continues to be very personal it continues to be very intimate it is formed my formed quite a bit on my body and that exchange of uh, exchange of information in some sense between my body and the clay body remains critical to the process and the way i move with clay um and that flow of information as i am working uh, with the clay uh, layering coil over coil to excavate um stories from my body in some way um and you know you know trying to pick uh membranes of the clay and trying to pick membranes of reason and emotion within myself um in some way trying to unearth uh the intelligence of the body and by when i say the body i mean both my body and the clay body um so uh so i mean that is the process it is in some sense very very intimate very very uh, sort of self reflective uh loaded in many ways as well um but that is the process of making work um and i mean i think uh looking back at some of these images uh of process one of the um what i i went back to another text that i had read some time ago and I, again i'm going to share a small uh small excerpt from uh, ursula k le guin's essay being taken for granted um and she says i wish that those who take me for granted would once in a while treat me like mud being mud is really different from being granite and should be treated differently mud lies around being wet and heavy and oozy and generative mud is under people make footprints in mud as mud i accept feet i accept weight i try to be supportive i like to be obliging those who take me for granted say this is not so but they haven't been looking where they put their feet that's why the house is all dirty and tracked up um and and i mean again you know i mean this sort of going back and forth between reading and making is is very much a part of my process i mean very often i don't it, it doesn't come together until the the very end uh but it is, but but it is a very very important uh way of working for me um I'm just going to share some more uh, pictures of the actual objects that I made for this project. Uh, in the end, um, this time I made a group of ten objects, um, and all of them again made on my body or built against my body, against the measures of my body, uh, but at the same time keeping with my emotional, mental state at that time. And I found that they don't necessarily fit me. Um, any more uh, really or they 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 grew over me uh, sometimes they they might be intimate uh, but very very often they felt and feel quite ungraspable uh, and uh, precarious uh, heavy and quite difficult um some of some of the objects that came from from uh, this process um in the end of uh, the work that um uh, came from these objects that came together as something uh, that became the outcome of these objects actually is is a, is a, is a moving uh, image actually um and these are some of 
the alternatives that I had uh, to play around with the image itself. With all of these objects, some fired, some unfired, sitting on my body, uh, making me uncomfortable. I'm barely able to bear the load of these objects. Um, and I balance them with great care uh, and great restlessness, uh, much like where we are right now, on myself, exerting their full force uh, in some sense, pinning me down, uh, ready to throttle me. Um, and Yes, this is the final film. This is Weightlifter. Um, it feels like a churning of memory and gut to spill out stories of grief, elation, rage, um, hope, hopelessness, and love. So that is the image that I would like to leave you with. Um, but as that is playing I'd also be quite ha happy to answer questions I am not sure if um, any questions have come in already but I'm quite happy to answer any questions if anybody has um, technical questions also or anything else um, that you have to ask how do you come to such abstract forms um, so actually the forms really grow out of the moment. I have a general idea when I start of what I am thinking about uh, or what I'm going to build around or where I'm going to build around on my body. Uh, but the forms really come out of the process and out of the story and out of the sort of precariousness of the moment, uh, which is something that I that I enjoy very much as well as something that gives me tremendous amount of stress because it may or may not always work. Um, how uh, Anandani asks, uh, how do you think about decoration within this process? Uh, so actually, I mean, um, I, I don't think of it as decoration and, in, uh, and uh, I, I do uh, think of, I, I do think about developing surfaces to mean something so I, I am constantly doing glaze tests and tests for slips and I am thinking about uh, how I do I, how I actually handle the work and where and what is the sensation that I want from the clay on me so how heavy I want it how rough I want it how smooth I want it how soft I want it so I am thinking of it in terms of surface more than the idea of decoration. That said, I read a very beautiful article yesterday in Nandini called um, okay, I forgot. Uh, Ceram Ceramics is Integral to Humanity. Uh, why dismiss it as decoration? Not that decoration is bad or de decoration can be dismissed as, but you know exactly what I mean being a ceramicist yourself. Um, Sasha, how do you do you often find inspiration in poetry? How do you search for the right poem? I don't search for the right poem. I do often find inspiration in poetry. Um, I I mean I really enjoy in some sense, you know, the the precision of words used and I, that brings about like the sort of really wide range of emotion and yet sort of some that sort of openness of emotion that it allows um, I, I don't usually search for the poem it's usually something that I have read that comes back to me I mean both of these texts that I shared today was something that I had read in the past that sort of came back to me uh, while I was working I'm also like when I, I, I do read poetry and I write it down so I have poems falling out of books which I love uh, and I don't write poetry unfortunately I wish I was that talented uh, what does the glaze and not fired mean under uh, so so, uh, so there are uh, some pieces that are fired and glazed uh, Sangeeta uh, but I, I did purposely also leave some pieces that were unfired because when I'm actually lying down there and those pieces are sitting on me and some of them are like rock hard and have the capacity to destroy other pieces that are really fragile 
um, I want that tension and I, wa- I, I want that weight on me because that is what that experience of that weight and that the precariousness of the situation is what is I think the crux of the work um, and so I, I definitely I, I want all of those things sitting on me and I want me I mean I am in in this image uh, it, it's, it's stressed and tense with my body because I know everything that it is holding on it and in it um, and so that sort of uh, that phys- that that sort of phys- the the experience of the stress in real time in the in in this image is a big part of the work yeah oh thanks divya hello hello thanks to all of you uh, oh uh, Anil, anirudh has asked another question i don't know if i have the time to answer it do you see these works as surrogates or as ornaments to the body both actually uh, they definitely are definitely definitely actually they they both uh, may not be surrogates of my body but it's they're definitely surrogates of my experience in a way um, and i mean even if like when when we think of things that we we place on ourselves as ornaments as well they they that comes loaded that comes loaded with experience that comes loaded as things that have been passed down to you or uh, you know com- comes with a sort of uh, yeah it's not it's not neutral at all so i do think of this work as ornaments in that way uh, but i mean like i i don't think it is uh, ornaments in a sort of i don't know tech decorations on the body kind of way uh do you consider your work to be performative yes i i i, I do think uh, that the work is performative but that said i am also and i haven't arrived at an answer trying to understand what performance means uh, to me i've been a kathak dancer for uh, most of my life um, and and definitely uh, i i bring that experience to the work and even to the making i think uh, even in terms of you know how uh, how the riyas develops and things like that but um but i am not uh, but but yeah i i am still also trying to come to a uh an understanding of what performance means to me uh yes anjani i believe this will be available as a recording me me bumbling on a screen for posterity I think with that I should end uh this live and uh thanks a lot to everybody who joined um and I hope that you guys all join us next week uh because next week on the 31st um Thursday uh there are going to be four more exciting presentations uh Sarmeshtha Bose, Shashank Peshawariya, Sasha and Tapan Mohrana will um uh, be talking about their projects uh that they undertook as part of uh, the award and everybody is has made such amazing work so please 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 do join bye bye thank you very much